Hi everyone, my name's Claire and I'm the project officer for the River Cray and Thames Mead for Thames 21. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Bexley's Rivers and Waterways, a little bit about Thames 21's projects and hopefully inspire you to get out and discover some of these places or some places you may not know or haven't visited for a long time. If you're a Bexley resident, you're lucky enough to have three rivers on your doorstep. There's the Thames, the River Cray and the River Shuttle, as well as seven kilometres of canals and lakes in Thamesmead. You may know all of these rivers already, but if you're not familiar with them, I'll give you a quick idea of where they are. The Thames forms Bexley's northern border before flowing out into the estuary and out into the North Sea. The River Shuttle starts in Avery Hill in Greenwich and flows to meet the River Cray to join the River Cray uh, near Hall Place at Bexley Village. The River Cray starts in Orpington and then flows up to join the River Darrant just north of Crayford uh, before flowing into the Thames and out into the estuary. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Thames 21's projects as well, starting with the River Cray. So I'm here at the River Cray at Footscray Meadows where Thames 21 have got funding to improve 800 metres of river habitat downstream of Five Arch Bridge. The River Cray is pretty special, it's a chalk stream and these are quite rare, there's only about 200 chalk streams in the world and 85% of those are in southern England. So we're really lucky to have such a rare and special habitat right here. Like all other rivers, or many other rivers, chalk streams are under threat from various various sources including litter, pollution, abstraction for human use and structures such as culverts, weirs and bridges which can stop fish being able to travel up to where they want to get to, so halting fish migration. So it's really important that we look after these special types of river. So our project at this site aims to boost river health and kickstart some natural processes by introducing some large woody material into the river, including some smaller trees from the banks. The river in some places can be quite straight with a quite a flat bed and rivers naturally tend to be more wiggly than this and they have areas of slower flow and faster flow and deeper and shallower areas and these differences allow opportunities for plants and animals to grow. So by adding the wood, we're hoping to kickstart some of these natural processes, improve the diversity of the river and provide habitats for more plants, invertebrates, fish, birds and other animals. And by removing some of the vegetation from the banks also allows more light to hit the river and encourage more vegetation to grow, which again boosts diversity. And the fish like to hide in amongst the tree roots and branches when they're in the river, so it makes them feel safe and sheltered. These works are going to be happening over the next few months and if you would like to find out more please visit our project page on the Thames 21 website. I'm in Thamesmead now where Thames 21 have been working with London Wildlife Trust and Landowners Peabody to improve the canals and lakes for wildlife. Since 2018, with the help of some amazing volunteers, we've installed 350 metres squared of floating habitats in the canals and lakes. You might wonder what a floating habitat is. Well, you can see one just behind my shoulder. This one's newly installed, so the plants haven't grown yet. But they are basically floating platforms or islands, sort of rafts, which we plant with native wetland plants. And they provide habitat, shelter, food, and act as stepping stones along the canal for the wildlife that live there. They enable plants to grow in areas where they couldn't before, um, because the canals are man-made. So we have two more sites to install next year, early in the spring, so if you're interested in joining us for one of these events, please check out the Thames 21 calendar nearer the time, and hopefully we'll see you there. Lots of the residents that we've spoken to during these events have been really pleased to see some additional greenery going into the canals, which is great because we're hoping to enhance the canals for people, for the people that live here, as well as for wildlife. It's become increasingly obvious to lots of us during lockdown that access to nature is really important for our physical and for our mental well-being. And there's even a term for the effects of lack of access to nature, which is nature deficit disorder. A lot of the places that I've been talking about today are freely accessible, or large parts of them are freely accessible in Thamesmead, along the Thames, along the Cray and along the, along the Shuttle. There are walking routes, the Cray Riverway and the Shuttle Riverway, which are signposted, and the Thames Path, which actually runs all the way to the Cotswolds if you're feeling energetic. Or you could visit a place and pick a spot and spend some time watching the world go by or wildlife watching or perhaps an art activity or some photography. But we're keen to know what you go out and find and see and discover by the rivers and the waterways. So tag us at Thames21 on social media and let us know how you get on. Thank you. If you're interested in finding out more about London's rivers, 
was a week-long series of events at the end of October called London Rivers Week. Lots of different organisations from across London that are involved in looking after rivers and waterways take part and host events and activities throughout the week, so there's lots to discover and find out about. More of these events are going to be online this year, but there's still going to be plenty to do and plenty to join in with. If you'd like more information, please check out the London Rivers Week webpage on the Thames 21 website and the calendar and let us know what you're planning to join in with. Thank you for listening and I hope you enjoy some exploring. Bye.